doing some work on the Bertie Bongo and uh, got the new diesel heater bracket the Chinese diesel heater which actually the diesel heater fits inside the engine compartment on these vehicles and there's a special bracket for it which looks like this and this bolts on here designed for the bongo that's where the diesel heater goes and um, I'm in the process of um, seeing where everything fits put that up there for a minute and you have to remove this power resistor and relocate it down there I think but um, I'll check this in a minute and see whether it does go there and uh, got about the heater on there first and then it fits onto the vehicle well it's going in this is the air intake for the burn chamber the heater itself uh, the wires run around here for the um, power feed the control I've just dropped in here for the time being that might have to go on this centre console somewhere uh, might be the easiest and I'm just looking for somewhere to fit the pump and I think I found somewhere due to the weather and one thing or another I didn't actually record a full installation of the diesel heater in the Mazda Bertie Bongo vehicle but I will go over some of the things I have done and one of them was how I connected the diesel heater to the fuel line in the bongo and very simply uh, in the driver's side under the engine cover is the fuel filter that feeds the engine from the main diesel tank and it's simply a matter of cutting the fuel line the existing rubber fuel line and fitting a T-piece originally I was going to use plastic T-pieces but I wasn't sure how good they was with the fuel there's one here so I bought a brass one so I cut the fuel line which is a rubber pipe between the filter and the engine I inserted the T-piece in line this like this one and then I've got a motorcycle or moped scooter fuel tap and that feeds the thin sort of nylon pipe to the heater and it runs across from one side of the engine compartment to the other and it follows the same route as the water hoses for the heater the um, back compartment of the Mazda Bongo so that's what I did with the fuel line it's as simple as that a T-piece I didn't fit a fuel filter uh, very simply because the filter that filters the fuel to the engine it's got a it catches water as well so as the fuel line is after the main filter there's no point fitting another one so that's what I did, put a T piece in, short piece of pipe like this with obviously clamps, uh, a moped, scooter, fuel tap, another piece of the rubber hose and then the main fuel line that came with the heater. The reason why I fitted the fuel tap is so that in the summer I could just turn it off, you know, so I don't need to have fuel going through the line. Um, it was a little bit awkward to bleed air from the system but two or three attempts and it's done sort of thing but what you must do or what they advise you to do is this gets mounted vertical so if there's any air in the bottom of this pipe it goes to the engine uh, fuel and not like that so the picks air up so it goes that way 
So that's how I did the fuel line to the diesel heater. In addition to the fuel line, I purchased a one-way valve um, just in case this only allows fuel to go one way just in case the fuel would run back from the diesel heater to the engine but it doesn't seem to do that so I didn't fit this it's a one-way valve it's only three pounds I think it was but I didn't need it now for the exhaust the pipe that came with the diesel heater wasn't long enough so what I did I bought a two meter extension piece I didn't need the full length of that but I also bought a three meter length of this heat material here um, it's like a tube of this glass fiber material I think it is and you run the the exhaust down it um, it keeps the heat if you accidentally touch the exhaust with your hand this stops you from being burnt but it also keeps the heat away from the body work and uh, so I, I decided to buy some of that and fit um, it's quite expensive though but you can feed your exhaust pipe down the middle and then you can put your clamp round this so, so it holds it onto the exhaust as well as clamping the joints up and this is what's left of the two meter length and um, this will get used for another project if need be something interesting I discovered with, to do with the exhaust itself this is a spare exhaust and this is from a three five kilowatt uh, diesel heater the difference being um, the two kilowatt exhausts are different to the three and five kilowatt exhausts silencer that is or muffler uh, and the reason it's different the fumes going here round a curve like that and back out on the three and five kilowatt ones so it's not straight through if you look down the tube you can't see straight out the two kilowatt ones are straight through so the position of this is center on the silencer so it goes straight through and out the other side see what I mean this is offset it's set to one side the two kilowatt ones are in the middle and it just goes straight through and out so it's quite a lot of difference so this would restrict the flow more on a two kilowatt one I've not fitted this I've fitted the one that came with it which is a straight through okay I'm, I should have done this a while ago but the light has been so bad I'll try and do uh, show you underneath the van um, what the exhaust system looks like for the diesel heater Right. I don't know when it's coming out but that's where the diesel heater is there and the fuel pump the, the pipe goes along right there's the silencer tilted over to let any moisture come out and it goes all along and it comes out just before the rear wheel just here hopefully you can see that it's difficult to do it because it's so dark under here hopefully you can see the heater up there all right I'm just going to show you I'm inside the van the Bertie Bongo the temperature is 0.5 degrees centigrade and uh, this is where I've mounted the actual um, display and for the diesel heater it's on the back of the console where the gear changes and the handbrake and um, the isolation switch 
is in the glove compartment. Right, I'm in the front now, and I open this up. And at the very back here, this is a little mess. There's a switch. And you switch it down, and this is a red light, and that's putting the diesel heater on. Puts the power onto the diesel heater. And we're only reading 10 volts. That's but it's very very bitter. Well, right, we'll switch it on and see if it will start up. Okay. Now the outlet for the is here, and I need to switch it for heater three. It's on heater three. Okay. It takes about 15 minutes to go from zero to 22 degrees in this van. It's only a small van and we'll see if it will start up uh, what else I'm going to say yeah the isolation switch in, in the glove compartment um, just to talk about that uh, it's not actually switching 10 amps if you think about it it only draws 10 amps when the heater is starting up or when it's switching off the isolation switch doesn't have to be 10 amp rated switch current ratings are based on switching the current I'm referring to a switch that once it's operated it's carrying the current so a 5 amp switch will actually carry 10 amps but it won't switch 10 amps I hope that makes sense uh, switches have a lot of um, specifications to them and um, one is to do with the switching capacity and the carrying capacity so bear that in mind it doesn't have to be a massive switch switching 10 amps on your diesel heater because you're not actually switching 10 amps